got a lot to to cover today because I, I don't think I'm going to be even I'm not going to be able to get to all the ones that I wanted to talk about but um okay so Christian Christian music review by the way I kind of want a new <laughs> I don't know if you guys can think of like an interesting name for this segment. Cause now I'm making highlight videos from this section. Um, just let me know. Cause I, I kind of want something more creative than Christian music review. But anyways, uh, so last episode, we talked about a couple singles from this band, from this album before the album actually came out. Shago Guevara. Um, I'm actually really excited to just quick talk about this album because it's become one of my favorites from this year. For those of you who don't know, uh, Chago Guevara is basically a super group of a lot of different Christian musicians uh, from, from over the years. And the lead singers uh, is uh, Steve Taylor, which some of you guys know, I'm a big fan of Steve Taylor and um, Chago Guevara had like one album from the 90s, early 90s, and then they never had anything else, and uh, Chago Guevara didn't really become a thing. And uh, now they, they, they got back together to make another album, Halcyon Days, and uh, I think it's terrific. I think it's a really fun... I mean, almost anything Steve Taylor touches, if it's music, is going to be gold. Um, unless it's a movie... The only good movie I've seen from Steve Taylor is Newsboys Down Under the Big Top. Uh, we, me and my friend Mitchell talked about uh, Blue Like Jazz, um, but you can we, we did a video on that, and you can watch that. But Chago Guevara is no exception when it comes to just the quality that Steve Taylor brings to anything that he does. And um, it's, it's fun, it's quirky, just like you'd expect from... Steve Taylor, but it's also, it's not Steve Taylor and the Perfect Foil, which was the other band that he did. It's very distinct, and I think uh, the different members of the band bring it a different sound to it. Uh, it's just good rock and roll, you know? Um, a lot of, I hear a lot of Stones influence. I hear a lot of uh, REM influences in there. Uh, but you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's own unique thing. And, uh, it's a lot of fun, clever lyrics and, uh, just catchy tunes. And what more could you want from an album? Um, so I, I highly recommend, uh, Chago Guevara, um, their album Halcyon Days. I probably give it like an eight out of 10. Uh, it's become one of my favorites in general this year, not just a uh, Christian album, but just album in general. Uh, okay. Next up, we got uh, Emery's new album, Rub Some Dirt On It. Now, I, I used to be a huge fan of Emery. I haven't really followed them uh, in a while. Um, oh shoot, where'd my camera go? Steven says, I think it's pronounced Chagall. Oh, uh, you're probably right. <laughs> I've just heard it pronounced Chagall or sh 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 Chagall. I, I don't know. From what I know, it's, um, it's a reference to the revolutionary, the revolutionary guy. Um, I forget his full name. They like took two revolutionary like leaders and then they like made him one name, but I, I, I forget. There we go. Someone's going to comment on the lack of information that I have, but you know, <laughs> putting me on the spotlight. Anyways, rub some dirt on it. Emery. I, I used to be a big fan of, Emery and I just haven't really followed them as much but I was interested in this album because they were promoting it as this big thing because 
it was all recorded live in one take. Um, well, not I mean, it probably took several takes to get it right, but it's like all you know what I mean. It's all recorded live. Uh, and so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and I checked it out, and uh, I don't know. I'm kind of slightly underwhelmed. It's not that it it's bad, but I guess my opinion when it comes to live recorded albums like it's not like a live concert or anything but they just recorded it live um um oh yeah steven says combines che Guevara and mark chagall chagall whatever to imply imply revolutionary art yep that's that's what i read up on that thanks steven <laughs> thanks for the fact check I don't think I have, um, hold on, let me put, um, chat box, I don't have chat box on this scene, sorry, a little bit of, um, behind the scenes here, going on, there we go, so, I was a little underwhelmed with this album because my opinion when it comes to like live recorded albums is that it should it sh it should be able to replace the the experience of an actual studio album. Uh, I don't listen to a lot of live albums for the reason because like they just don't always sound as good. Some can, and I think actually a good example is uh, Pine Grove's, um, what's it called, Amperland, New York. There are some bands that can really pull off like having a, a good live sound, and I think the problem with this, um, with Rub Some Dirt On It, is that it sounds too, too tight and clean. I feel like that they could have... Uh, done something better to have it more have an atmospheric sound because for most of the songs um if you listen to it on headphones you you hear one guitar in the left ear and one guitar in the right ear and that's basically all it is for out throughout the rest of the album and it when they mix it that way it kind of makes a lot of the songs lose their impact which is really unfortunate because I like a lot of the songs in the album, but the whole time I was thinking, man, this just feels like a lesser live version of an actual album. Um, and that's not really a thing that you want to say or, or, or think when you're listening to an album like that. Um, I think another good example of a, a live live recorded album that sounds good is uh everything is alive by the chariot um so yeah it had some there were some songs on this album that uh it worked um and that was mostly because they made use of uh whoever was playing the keys and they had someone on acoustic guitar at additional to the two electric guitars on the left and the right, and it made it give it more of a full sound. But unfortunately, I don't think the production is great on this album, and it just makes it sound like a lesser album of uh, what could be like a good Emery album. I like a lot of the themes that they explore and the lyricism. Uh, not perfect. There's one song on the album that's just like, this just sounds like a 50-year-old trying to be emo. <laughs> Which I don't, I don't know if they're 50. I think uh, the members of Emory are mostly in their 40s, I think, 30s and 40s. But it, it just kind of gave off the vibes of an uh, old man trying to seem emo. But uh, there were other great, uh, great songs and great lyricism. It's an interesting album. It's not terrible, but it's just uh, kind of underwhelming. Uh, but I give it, uh, it's like in the middle for me. I give it like a 5 out of 10. So, rub some dirt on it, Emery. Uh, Judah and the Lion. Uh, this has been out for a little while, but I haven't really had a chance to listen to it and give it a, uh, a talk. 
Um, actually, I, I'm kind of rethinking my uh, my score from the last album. I give it a six out of ten. This one was more of a five out of ten for me. Unfortunately, I think um, I have followed Judah and the Lion for a while since their early days. Honestly, uh, some Judah and the Lion fans probably wouldn't even remember their actual first EP. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was before Sweet Tennessee, the one that a lot of people know. And they actually started out as like super Christian, super Christian in their lyricism. And these days they've gotten more uh, mainstream and a little bit more vague in general with their themes, which is fine. I'm not really complaining, but I think Revival, this album, is an example of Judah and the lion trying to compromise in order to appease uh, a general audience. Because I think a lot of the lyricism in this album is very, is very simple and vague and kind of watered down. And it feels like that they're just trying to um, appeal to a younger audience. And uh, a lot of the songs just didn't really do anything for me. Uh, there's some interesting production. <coughs> I think some of the album is a little too overproduced, but sometimes it works. Uh, there actually is one song that I really do like that, according to the uh, streams that I see on Spotify, I think it's kind of underrated, but it's called Blue Eyes. And it's a song that uh, Judah uh, wrote to his dad. Uh, who I think who I believe passed away um so it's a song to his dad um it's not the worst album or anything it's just kind of it, this is also just kind of in the middle um I think that Judah uh has done some better work uh not excluding uh early Judah and the Lions stuff basically everything from the beginning up until up to uh, Kids These Days, which I think was their last good album, in my opinion. Um, and also Judah's side projects, like uh, just Judah, <laughs> Judah period, where he gets a, a lot more explicit with his uh, faith and Christianity. And uh, I like that stuff. I, th I think it's good. But I think Judah and the Lion, um, I think they compromise a bit too much. But that's just my opinion. 5 out of 10 for Revival. Now, speaking of live albums, we got Sandra McCracken's Light in the Canyon. And I was really excited for this album because I'm a Sandra McCracken fan. I think she's like one of the better uh, Christian artists who still has very uh, faith-based uh, lyricism and uh, a lot of worshipful stuff that she does as well. And uh, she's very talented. And uh, this was going to be another like live recording album. And she re-recorded re a lot of her older songs and like did new renditions of them with a couple new songs on here as well. And uh, it's not a bad album, but I will say um, there, there's a lot that I love about this album. I love the great mixture of, of folk and jazz for these renditions. Uh, um, really fun stuff. It just falls a little too short from being a well-mixed album. Uh, it's actually really just the acoustic guitar. Um, oddly enough, the acoustic guitar sounds really tinny and not EQ'd that well. And it's a little, it's, it's kind of distracting for me. It's not... It's not like overwhelming in it, but it kind of lessens lessens the quality of the production for me. And, and since it's a pretty prevalent part in the music, it, it yeah, it gets a little annoying. Otherwise, it's a fun uh, it's fun to listen to if you if I just try to zone that out. Um, I just feel like that they could have done a better job at making it sound good. Um, but. If you put it on, if you, if I'm not listening to it on headphones, I can probably enjoy it because I, I still love Sandra McCracken's songwriting skills and what she brings to the table when it comes to Christian music. 
I just prefer her her previous studio work. So a lot of people trying out the whole live recording thing and, and just not working out this year. Unfortunately. And uh that's it. Hey, so I don't know if you guys know this, but what you just watched was basically just a clip of a full podcast episode of my podcast, The I'm Clifford Today Show. So you should just go check out that whole episode. Also, while you're at it, you might as well like the video and subscribe to my channel. You know, that'd be really nice. I mean, you're nice people, right? Okay.